All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a comparison between two different Cold Steel 4MAX scouts. And really it's gonna be looking at the differences between these two knives, with one of them being pre-GSM and the other being post-GSM. So what does that mean, pre and post-GSM? Well, Cold Steel was purchased by GSM Outdoors in 2020. And so GSM Outdoors is like a outdoor conglomerate brand that uh, buys different outdoor brands and just then is the owner. And uh, it <laughs> caused a lot of hullabaloo in the knife world, particularly for you know fans of Cold Steel knives. And I have been a fan of Cold Steel knives since I was you know like a little kid. I remember my dad would get the um, proof or whatever they call them uh, videos that they would do where they, you know, had all the knives and swords and, you know, cut up pig carcasses and did all these crazy tests and all that. And, you know, I loved watching those when I was little. And uh, I've, you know, enjoyed their, their knives since then, really. And so, you know, when Cold Steel was purchased by GSM, I was a little concerned also because, you know, these big conglomerates, it's very different from what Cold Steel was, which, you know, they were owned by Lynn Thompson, which <laughs> whatever thoughts you have on Lynn Thompson, he definitely loved knives. He loved knives. He loved martial arts. Um, I suppose he still loves knives. He still loves martial arts. Uh, but he was like a true knife person. You know, he might have been a little bit uh, intense for a lot of people or however you want to say it, but uh, he certainly, there's no question that he was a knife person. And then, you know, when a company gets bought by a big conglomerate like this, you don't know if it's going to keep that same feel where, you know, it's really made by knife people for knife people. And to be completely honest with you from the general, like, outward facing things that GSM has done, I don't think that I've liked a lot of it. So, uh, you know, they're, they're marketing using uh, some guy that used to go by stick man. And now I think he just goes by stick, but he didn't seem like a knife person either. And you need to have someone who really likes and knows knives, you know, <laughs> talking about the knives for your marketing. Now, I don't know if he, he is a knife person and just didn't see them that way to me, but it was very different than when people like, uh, Andrew Demko were making the videos, you know, he is, there's no question that he and Lynn Thompson are knife people. And then also some of their designs I just haven't loved, but I didn't love all of the designs pre-GSM either. But one design that I really do love, I've had it for a long time, is the 4MAX Scout. So speaking of Demco, this is a Demco design. This is a massive, massive knife, but it is, you know, it has some, I guess, mid to lower range materials for today's market, which is, you know, Cold Steel's version of FRN basically for the handle and then OS 10A steel. Uh, and so it brings it in at a really, you know, budget friendly price. When I first got this, it was, I believe $110, uh, but I think I got it from White Mountain Knives and uh, it, you know, the discount code, which I have a discount code, you can check it out in the description, but the discount co code brought it down to basically $100. Now, since then, these have been going on sale for ridiculous prices. Um, when I purchased this one, the Post GSM, I think it was $50. Now, that might be wrong. They've been 70, I saw, 50, I think, uh, 60. So, you know, I've actually recommended them to people when they, they go on sale for those crazy prices because I just think that it is an absolutely ridiculous price. This knife, uh, <laughs> At that price, at $100, this is a great value if you want a really big, ridiculous, hard-use knife. At $50 or $60, it is like, you know, if you like hard-use knives, you should buy it at that price. Um, so, you know, they've been going on sale for really, really good prices, you know, even considering that they don't have the highest-end steel. And uh, this knife I've had for just over... Let's see, it must be just over three years. I got this on my birthday in 2020, uh, and it is now just after my birthday in 2023. So I've had this knife for three years. I've used it, carried it a lot. I really, really like it. But I've also had this one actually for a little while. I got this as a backup. I liked the, this one so much, I wanted to have a backup in case I ever lost 
or broke it, even though <laughs> breaking it is very unlikely. So this one hasn't been carried or used, but I just wanted to show some, some differences here between the pre and post GSM. And the first thing that you can look for to show you, you know, which it is, is the logo. So Cold Steel was using this logo on the right here for a while, just a real simple, you know, Cold Steel, the steel a little offset and uh, kind of thinner lettering also on the steel and that it was made in Taiwan. I do, you know, it's made in Taiwan, not China, uh, you know, whatever your politics are and everything, it is a little bit different if you care about that kind of thing. Uh, and then the post GSM, they changed to this logo here. I don't really have strong feelings on it. Um, I think that they're both are fine. I just, I, I think I prefer this one just for the simplicity of it, but that's the first thing that you can look for. Okay. Now, another difference is the blade finish. So if you look at these two knives, it can be a little bit difficult to tell, uh, in video, but the stone wash is a little bit heavier on the post GSM. So, uh, hopefully I can get that to show. Yeah, there we go. I think it shows pretty well there. You can see that you see those lines of the stone wash more pronounced on the post GSM, but you know, they both have that stone wash. It's just a little heavier on the post GSM. Now the handle, you know, finish seems to be the same on both of them. I don't really see a difference. The pocket clip again has the same difference. Now I have uh, modified the pocket clip on the pre GSM a little bit. Uh, usually I like to lift the pocket clip up a little bit on cold steels and uh, rub some sandpaper underneath it to take a little bit of the roughness away from the handles because they tend to be very rough. Um, but that's just one kind of aesthetic differences between the two blade finishes. Now, one of the biggest differences and, and something that I think is really interesting here is how the blades are ground. So you can probably see at the Ricasso or the plunge grind that there's a difference, right? So the pre-GSM was ground kind of a flat grind here. So it has no gradual grind to that plunge. It's just straight in. Whereas the post-GSM has a gradual transition. Now, I tend to, to not prefer the gradual transition as much on knives, but the other thing here is that the post GSM on the left is actually ground a good bit thinner. Now, again, I haven't used this one, uh, the post GSM, so this is just based on looking at the knife. But if you look at them here, you can see that right behind the edge, that post GSM is definitely a little thinner. And you can see it even easier, I think, at the tip. So hopefully, I don't really want to hold on to these blades too much, but I'll show you one at a time. So here is the post GSM, and you can see that that comes to a relatively fine point there, down to, you know, reasonably thick tip. Compare that to the pre GSM. You can see it is much, much thicker. And, you know, I think sometimes some people, when they see that, they might think, oh, well, the pre GSM is better. I actually don't think so. I think that on a knife like this, where it, it already has such thick blade stock, I think I would prefer to have it be a little thinner. I don't think that this post GSM grind is so thin that it's going to cause any problems. I think that that's gonna be plenty strong, but is going to just cut a little bit better. So I was really interested to see that difference there with the pre versus post GSM. Is that something that's throughout the different, you know, models? I really don't know. I haven't bought a whole lot of cold steel knives since then. Another one that is a, well, this is actually a pre GSM also. So this one's not a great example, but this is a, another uh, cold steel that I bought after the GSM purchase. But it looks again, because of that logo, like it is actually a pre GSM, but I do have, and another Demco design, the 8015 Lite, which is a post GSM knife. It does not have that gradual uh, plunge. So interesting that this one doesn't have that. 
I don't have a pre GSM 8015 light to compare to, but uh, I think that this one is ground nice and thin also. So, you know, I don't know if that is something throughout the, the different lines of knives, but at least on the four max scout in these sample sizes of one pre GSM and one post GSM, the post GSM seems to be ground uh, definitely thinner. So I like that. It's going to be just, you know, I, if you break this knife, these four max scouts are so hefty, so durable, so sturdy. I've chopped, I've pried, I've done all the stuff you're not supposed to do with a folding knife with no issue. I think even with the thinner, the thinner grind, if you break this, I mean, it's kind of on you. So uh, I just wanted to show some uh, differences that you can see between these two uh, four max scouts since I have to. And it's kind of a unique situation uh, when a, a knife company changes hands or changes owners to see, you know, how that changes how the actual knives are. So uh, if you love cold steel knives, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the change from GSM or from, I guess, Lindsay Thompson to GSM. And uh, also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell. Select all so you know when I post new videos. Check out my other social media. I am on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like these and knife related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.